Good morning and thank you for stopping by. I wanted to quickly share a word of encouragement with you out there. Maybe you've been struggling in your mind. Maybe you've been battling with the thoughts of your mind. And I wanted to share a scripture that's found in the book of 2 Corinthians chapter 10. And we're going to read from verse 3 to 5. And I hope that, you know, if you find yourself in a position that you've been battling, that you've been uh, feeling that you've been overcome by the thoughts or, or, or the imaginations that have been rising up against you, that this scripture will encourage you, that you would go back in your own time and, and read these scriptures and profess them over yourself and begin to practice them, okay? So it reads, For though we walk in the flesh, we do not war according to the flesh. For the weapons of our warfare are not carnal, but are mighty through God for the pulling down of strongholds, casting down arguments and every high thing that exhausts itself against the knowledge of God and bringing into captivity, into obedience, every imagination, bringing it into obedience in Christ. Now, when I read this, and I remember that I used to struggle in my past with thoughts and and those thoughts, I'll feed so much into them that I would then become depressed. I would then become stressed out and I would be weighed down and, and then it would turn to anxiety and, and I would think less of myself. And this is what the enemy wants to do to you. He wants to bound you by the thoughts of your mind. There are thoughts that are coming up against you and rising up that are trying to defeat your character that are trying to defeat who you are in Jesus Christ because I'm here to tell you that you're great in the Lord Jesus, that, that, that you are made, you are fearfully made in the image of the living God. And the enemy knows this and he wants to do everything in his strength possible so that you don't rise up. He wants to stop you from rising up into greatness. He wants to stop you from rising up to become the person that God created you to be. You were created to be great because God is great. And I'm going to tell you this. That, that you don't war according to the flesh. This is not how we fight. And in another scripture in Ephesians chapter 6, it says, For our battle is not against flesh and blood. So your war is not against your mother. Your war is not against siblings, brothers, sister, a husband, wife, children. But your war is against a spiritual force. Okay? And now these forces will tend to rise up. The Bible says that the enemy shoots darts, fiery darts at you. This is why we must pick up the shield, the armor, the shield of faith, so that we be able to quench the darts that the enemy cast at us. And then the Bible goes on to mention picking up the sword of the spirit. Now, the sword of the spirit is what you're going to fight with. It's the weapon that God has given you so that you can fight with Jesus. Once again, mentions in John 6, 63, that his word is spirit and life. And if you go back to Matthew, where Jesus was being tempted in the desert, we read how Jesus overcame the enemy. Because the enemy knew that Jesus was hungry after his 40-day fast. The enemy came to test Jesus, to tempt him to churn a, 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 a stone into bread. And Jesus said, and this is how Jesus fought the enemy. He, he, didn't, he didn't need to rebuke him. He, didn't, he, he just quoted the scripture and said, it is written, it is written. Thou shalt not live on bread alone, but by every word that comes from the mouth of God. So we see that the, the word, which is spirit, is the sword of the spirit, and it's the word of God, and this is how we overcome the enemy. This is how we overcome the imagination, is the thoughts that rise up against them and, and bring them into submission in Christ, because Christ is the word of God. So we see here that in verse 4, it says, For the weapons of our warfare are not cardinal, but they are mighty through God for the pulling down of strongholds. We pull these strongholds down. We pull these spiritual forces down by quoting the word of God, but not only quoting it, but by living it. See, when you live the word of God and you quote it, there's power in that because when you live by the word of God, this then in turn tells you that you're in God because it's through God that they're mighty. So by being in God, now you have authority. And, and to be in God means you hear the word of God, but then you put it into practice. You're living by it so that God himself will make his home inside of you and you will live inside of Jesus. And this is how it works. Uh, Christ in me and, and me in Christ. And then when I'm in Christ because I'm obedient, then the enemy has no power over me. 
because there's no sin inside of me. The sin has been overcome by the blood of Jesus and I've been born again. I've been born of a new mind, a new heart. I have a new way of thinking, a new way of living. So I'm able to have this power. I'm able to have this authority that is mentioned. And when I speak, it has to happen because now I have power and authority. So it says, for the weapons of our warfare are not carnal, but are mighty through God for the pulling down of strongholds. So now when I, when I speak it, and, and through God, when I speak the word through God, then the enemy resi- then the enemy flees. Then the enemy has to get away because there's authority behind the word that I speak because it's through God. It's his word, but it's through God that I'm doing it. So the enemy has to go. Okay, so the weapons of our warfare are not cardinal, but they're mighty through God for the pulling down of strongholds, casting down arguments. And every high thing that exalts itself against the knowledge of God, bringing every thought every thought or every imagination into captivity to the obedience of Christ. And it's a possibility that you've been struggling and it's a possibility that you did open a door to the, to the enemy and that door he has taken advantage of it, but you can close that door today. That door can be closed today by repenting of your sins and by accepting Jesus Christ back in and saying, Lord, be the Lord of my life. Send me your spirit to lead and guide me, empower me and cleanse me and break this bond that I have over my life, a bondage of evil thinking, a bondage of evil behavior. And you know what? The Lord will then begin to break these things so that you can get back on track, so that you can get back on course. So these imaginations and these things that exalt itself against the knowledge of God will be pulled down when you open your mouth and speak against it because now you're speaking with authority. Now you're speaking in Christ and because it's in God and in Christ, it holds power and authority and the demons are subjected. All the powers of, of, of the enemy, all the powers of darkness are subject to Jesus Christ. And then this is why Jesus said, I give you the keys to the kingdom of heaven. Whatever you loose on earth will be loosed in heaven. Whatever you bind on earth will be bound in heaven. And I have given you powers all o- over all the power of the enemy. I have given you authority over all the powers of the enemy to trample over snakes and scorpions. This is the authority that the believer has. This is the authority of those that follow Jesus have. When we hear his word, put it into practice, live by it, we then carry an authority that the world does not have. And this authority is powerful, is mighty for the pulling down of strongholds. This authority can be yours today. And it's a decision that you have to make, a decision to, and a covenant to follow Jesus and to lay down everything for his glory. That you say, uh, 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 less of me and more of you, God. I, 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 I surrender myself. I humble myself, I decrease so that you will increase. And then this authority will change the course of your life. So it's a possibility that you have been struggling with thoughts. I come against those thoughts right now by the power and the word of God. The Bible says if you meditate on the word of God day and night, you will be like trees planted by the rivers of water. The Bible also says as a man thinketh, so is he. Uh, Whatever you consume will consume you. And it's a possibility that you've been erring off the way of life. And I'm not here to condemn you. I'm here to say you you pick up your cross and continue following Jesus. The Bible says if you put your hand to the plow and you look back, you are unfit or unworthy for the kingdom of God. But the Bible says that if you fall seven times, you will be forgiven seven times. Not just seven times, but 77 times over and over. The Lord will forgive you. This is a time of grace. So get back up in the name of Jesus. Pick up your cross and continue following God. The fight ain't over yet. The fight is not over yet. I'm always reminded of a boxing match when a boxer falls and the the referee is counting and he gets back up. The fight is not over yet. The fight is not over yet. This is your time. This is your season. Rise up in the name of Jesus and overcome. And any thought that's been holding you uh, 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 captive or bound, I come against those thoughts right now. In the name of Jesus Christ, that every power and the, and, and the heavenly realms should be pulled down all because of the blood of Jesus. For Christ came to destroy the works of the devil. Christ is victorious. And the Bible says, greater is he that is inside of us than he that is inside of this world. And there is no name under heaven by which men shall be saved but the name of Jesus. It's the name above every other name. Call on that name and the Bible says you shall be saved. Call on that name and the Bible says he will answer. God is not a man that he shall lie. So God bless you guys out there. Remember, the weapons of our warfare are not carnal, but are mighty through God for the pulling down of strongholds, casting down arguments. It's a possibility you've been arguing with your spouse. 
you can cast down these arguments by the power of love, by the power of forgiveness. Casting down every high thing that exalts itself against the knowledge of God. There's many things that are exalting itself against the way, against the knowledge of God. They're mocking God. They're mocking the coming of God. There's many people that don't believe in the second coming. But the Bible says, I was reading this morning in the book of 1 John, that those who, who, who are in the church but mock the coming of Jesus still, or those who are not in the church, they are and have the spirit of the Antichrist. It's written right here in the book of 1 John. You can read it. Remember that we belong to Jesus. Christ is coming. Christ is coming for a church without wrinkle, spot, and blemish. Get in, get in track. Get online with what God is calling his church to do. His church is not a building. His church is a people that follow him. His church is a group of people that follow him with all their hearts. Get in line with what God is calling you to do. Hallelujah. Glory to Jesus. Hallelujah. I want to say thank you. Thank you for everybody out there that's been praying for this ministry, that's been praying for, 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 for an overcoming of this ministry, that we may overcome every, everything that rises up against us. Because when a ministry stands on truth, when a ministry st stands on the light, when a ministry stands on the gospel, the enemy always attacks when a ministry is standing and preaching truth, the enemy always attacks. And there's going to be many people that if you stand on truth, that will attack. There's going to be many things that will try to overcome you, but you continue standing. The Bible says, he who stands firm to the end shall be saved. With this being said, I'm going to give everybody a chance out there to, to know how to overcome and to know how to be saved. Number one, repent of your sins. Number two, accept Jesus Christ as your personal Lord and Savior. John 3, 16, for God so loved the world that he gave us his only begotten son that whosoever believe in him shall not perish but have everlasting life. This is the simple gospel. In the book of Romans, it says that if you confess with your lips and believe in your heart that Jesus is Christ, that Jesus is the son of God, you shall be saved. It's as simple as believing in your heart and confessing. He is my Lord and Savior. Just pray with me if you want to accept Jesus. Lord Jesus, I repent of my sins. And today, I believe that you are the Son of God and you are my Lord and my Savior. I accept you as my Lord and Savior. And this day, write my name in the Lamb's Book of Life. Thank you, Jesus. Amen. I believe that if you prayed that prayer by faith, you are saved. You have been welcomed to the greatest and biggest family. And even if you backslid and you want to reconcile, pray that prayer and be reconciled and be renewed. Be renewed in your strength and be renewed in your faith. Hallelujah. So with that being said, God bless you guys. We love you. We thank you for uh, hearing. We thank you for supporting this, uh, this movement. And we believe that God is going to do something great this year. And, and, and many ministries, and many ministries, but we believe it in this area, in this region, God is going to do something great. Uh, many things that God has given us to do, many things, and we can't do everything at one time, but one thing at a time we will do, and that and that would be to preach the gospel, and that would be to reach as many lost souls as possible. I, I I told the Lord this year, I don't want I don't want to I don't want to keep seeing people hopping from church to church. I don't want to try to grab the attention of other churches, of the people of other churches, and try to get them to come to our church. No, I want new, fresh people. I want people that are undiscipled, that have never been discipled. I want people that 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 never been sought after. I want clean. I want people that are empty and that can be filled with the gospel of Jesus. I want people. I want people that don't church hop. I want people that are firm in their faith. I want people that are firm. I want, I want, I want babies in, in, the, in the faith. I want to see people come to Jesus that never knew Jesus and be transformed. That's what I want this year. I want to add new lives to the kingdom of God. This is what the church is all about. Adding new people to the church. Adding new people to, to, to the way. Hallelujah. Going out there and evangelizing and doing the work of an evangelist. So I encourage you out there, pastors, preachers, leaders, don't aim for other people's uh, 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 sheep. Don't aim for other people's uh, um, 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 other church's sheep. Go find the souls. Hallelujah. Find the people and do the work that God has really called the church to do. And add souls. Hallelujah. Empty hell and fill heaven by the power of the gospel, which the gospel is the power of God unto salvation. Hallelujah. 
So God bless you guys out there. Remember, be fruitful and multiply by the power of the Holy Spirit. In Jesus' mighty name, we thank you. We bless you. If you want to become a partner of this ministry, we ask that you please uh, uh, send us an email, Javier Santos Ministries at gmail.com. Send us an email and we would love to pray for you. We want, we want to know what it is that you want a uh, prayer for. You don't have to put your prayer petition in the, in the comments below. You can email us. And if you want to partner up with us, that's a way to do it too. Email us and say, I just want to partner with you guys. And we'll send you guys emails. We'll send you guys uh, updates on events and, 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 and where we're going to be meeting. And also, if you want to uh, partner up by helping us uh, with giving, that'd be great. You know, we want to do outreaches. We want to do campaigns in, 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 in America, but also outside of America. We want to reach the world. We want to reach the lost. Hallelujah. We want to go into all the world and preach the gospel, as Jesus said, building up and teaching them to observe all things that I've commanded them. This is what the gospel is all about. So God bless you guys. We love you. Bless your families. Bless your ministries, leaders. And remember, bless your pastors. Pray for your pastors. Pray for the strength of those that are out doing missions. Pray for them always. May the Lord.